when I think about rehearsal, that's really a very mature moment for a director because you've done so much prior to that first rehearsal, right? You have to fall in love, so to speak, with your project. You have to date it and learn everything about it and go through many ups and downs before you even enter your first day of rehearsal. Um, and then I feel like when I finally get in rehearsal with actors, my job on the first day is to spread my obsession, right? I've been obsessed with this material sometimes a year, two years, three years. It's been in my subconscious. I've been dreaming about it. I've been researching it. I've been developing it with my creative team. Now I have to enter the room with a team of performers and say, this is why we need to reach you know, beyond. This is why this process ahead of us is necessary. This is why we're here. And usually on day one, um, I've found now, having done this several times, people are nervous, people are uncomfortable. You know, sometimes as a director, what you can do more than anything is get people to relax, get people to feel um, open, um, I always say on my first day of rehearsal, um, I'm going to bring an idea to the table. I expect you to bring an idea to the table, but I'm looking for the third idea that is better than either of our ideas. And I find that's really important to say up front because it puts the actor um, in a creative headspace. You know, as directors, sometimes people think that we want actors to do what we tell them to do this idea of the actor as a puppet, that that's your dream experience when the actors just do what the director wants. That is my nightmare, <laughs> truly. You know, when an actor says, what do you want? It's like, I don't know what I want. What I know I have are questions. And I always say um, to young directors who come to me, don't worry about having to have the answer. Actually, you shouldn't know the answer. The whole process of the entire production, right? Pre-production, rehearsal, even with an audience, is to discover the answer to your question. But you have to have a question. And I've always felt the work will be more deep, more fulfilling, the bigger the question is. So the, the issue becomes, are you asking a big enough question? You try to create an environment that really shows that people's opinion will be valued and listened to. Because it's typical as a leader, whether you're in the theater or in a business, you know, we want to know what everybody thinks, but then no one says anything because they, they don't really believe you care. So you have to really create that environment. You have to say if an actor says, how about this? Well, great, let's try it. And I often say in a process, I'll say, okay, option A, let's go. So we'll go through option A and they'll say, all right, great, let's put that here. Now let's try option B. Actor goes, okay, we know B. Oh, someone's got, how about option C? Let's try option C. So you really lay out, we're trying many options. There are many ways to solve a problem. And then, of course, as a director, you need to guide. You can't let it become chaotic because actors and everyone will panic if the director, if they think the director doesn't know what he or she is doing. So you look, you look, you watch, and like a great editor, you can say, okay, I think option B works best, so let's stick with that. And sometimes it's good to say, you know, for today, let's stick with B. You know, let's see as we go, maybe we'll learn more. Um, you know, often in a production, you're learning the vocabulary, you're learning the storytelling, so sometimes if you micromanage too much on one moment, you'll beat it to death. So you kind of maybe come at it three different ways, five different ways, try it, and then it's time to move on, let it go, do the rest of the work, move on, and then you find when you come back, you'll know exactly what you need to do. When you're in an, uh, a rehearsal period for a musical that's five or six weeks, that's exclusively in the rehearsal hall. You're usually rehearsing in three different spaces, uh, doing multiple things every day. So you have your one main room where you're blocking the play and everything's set out on the floor and you're moving chronologically through this, the narrative. And you have the, the real size. Yes, you, the, yeah. you, you try as best you can to have everything at real scale. Um, and then you'll have a second space, hopefully as large, with the stage mapped out so that things can be taken into a second space while you're continuing. 
uh, numbers, dance numbers, scenes, and then you have a third space usually where you're practicing music all the time. So you're going sort of multitasking on three cylinders. And then usually you have to have another space for your composer because you're actually asking your composer during this five-week process to make changes. So now I know when I do a new musical, I ask for four <laughs> spaces. Sometimes they're closets, but we can make do with a closet. <laughs> but you really need that, that amount of space because the, the productive, creative changes that are happening are so enormous. That's what, I, that's what never ceases to amaze me about process. You think you know everything, and then you get in the room in real time and space, and the next level of discovery happens. And then, of course, when you leave the rehearsal and you move on stage, things are going to change. I'm very adamant about inviting people into a process who I feel are there for the right reason. So my answer to your question about what is essential starts actually with who's in the room. And now, whenever I audition an actor for a, a show, you know, even if they're fantastic and they can sing and act and do everything better than anyone, I always ask, can we speak to someone who's worked with this person? Can I find out from a director or a stage manager or a producer? You know, are they in it? for the greater good, for the company? Are they a good company member? I often say, are they a good egg? <laughs> you know, we, because it's so hard. Rehearsal is hard. If we're going to be truly creative, we have to be able to lose ourselves in a process. We have to be willing to risk not knowing the answer if we really want to make something great. You know, there's always going to be some drama coming somewhere. Um, so I actually feel if it's going too well and there are no problems, I actually, that's when I get panicky because <laughs> I think this is, something's coming because this is not, um, you know, this is not, this is not right, so, you know. And I think the more you do the theater, the more you realize and you learn to trust that when it's difficult, when there's really friction, that you can't check out of it. You actually have to just keep going. Because sometimes at the hardest moment where things are the most tense or you're hitting rock bottom, and that can be any number of things, whether it's a creative problem, whether it's a rewrite on a script that's not happening, whether there's a performer that's stuck and just not delivering, you know, in a way, the more you can live with that tension, enter it, continue to work through it, then you stand the chance to really hit the breakthrough. 